Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about bent lamination and in this video we're actually going to be bending this particular arch. Uh, this was one that I'm making for legs on the desk project that we're working on on Saturdays. So this is uh, one that is a little bit more tricky and kind of scares a few people and I want to do a few videos actually detailing this and talking about how we're going to do it step by step. So let's actually dive into this and take a look at how do you do bent lamination. So normally this would all be a smooth piece of wood and then you have another smooth piece of wood that would mate to it and have the opposite curve. But in this case, I'm bending quarter inch material and this can actually hold a pretty decent curve coming around here. And so because of that, I only need points of connection. Also, because I have these points of connection around here, um, I don't need an opposite side on here because I'm actually going to be using a cinch strap to be the opposite side. And this will conform to the curvature. So this is a, an easy and quick way of doing it. If I'm just making a few pieces, making up a jig like this is, is relatively easy. Now, originally my intent was to put this on here and have a clamp holding this like that. Um, and that way I can bend this all the way around the frame. But after doing it a while, I realized this is a bit too stiff to get the clamp on there and then bend it all around. Using this strap to pull on the backside and actually using that to clamp it down worked incredibly well. The problem with using a strap is I need something to pull it back to. I need something to wrap the strap back around. And I can't just have it wrapping around the back of this. I need it to be out a little ways. So I put a two by four on here with a notch that I can fit the hold fast on. And so this two by four keeps this frame away from the hold fast and the hold fast holds it all in place. Plus the hold fast gives an easy space for the strap to wrap around. So there's no hard point. The strap is just wrapping around the rounded section of the hold fast. Also on the back here, I have several other hold fasts holding this frame in place. So this is moving around, basically locked down to the table. And then I have a couple screws and other places keeping it from sliding one way or the other. So this whole thing is, is locked down and I can bend the pieces on here without fear of moving it around. So on this end here, I need something to trap these in place. So when I bend all of these frames back against this, I'm not going to have this end popping out. So I have another hold fast here that's only purpose is to stop these from moving. And the hold fast from the hold fast to the corner is exactly the same thickness as six pieces of oak that I'm actually bending through here with a little bit of space for the strap to fit in there. So now I can have this all pinched in place down here at the end just using the hold fast of the bench. Also this hold fast here is acting as a stop so that the frame can't push away from this. When I apply force to it, I'm pushing the frame that way while it's just pushing it into this hold fast, which is stopping it. Now, if you don't have hold fast, then just a couple bars sticking down through the bench or something of that nature to stop things from moving around. And then you can put a few screws down to hold this all in place. So the other thing we need to think about is when we laminate these all together and we squeeze them out, all the glue is going to be coming up top and bottom. And we don't want to glue this onto the bench. So the easiest way I've found is just to put down some saran wrap, put some tape at the corners to keep it stretched. And that will give you some protection. So when it squeezes out, the saran wrap will stick to this and you can quickly peel it off the bottom. So you can protect your bench so you don't get all of these uh, epoxy spills like I've done already. When we start looking at actually bending the wood, we need to talk about the thickness of the wood. And the bend that I'm doing today, we're using quarter inch thick. And that's really thick because it doesn't bend that far. And you'll start to hear slight cracking sounds when I go too far. And you need to actually pick your thickness of wood depending upon the curvature which you want to bend. If you want a really tight bend, you're going to need some really thin wood. If you're going for something really large, like the bend I'm going to be doing later, I'm actually going to be bending half inch material. The bend I'm going to be doing in a few days is a long one. It's six foot long and I'm only going to be bending it about eight inches out over six feet. And so for that, I'm actually going to be using half inch material because it will naturally bend to that. You want to pick material that you can naturally bend and take it to the curvature you want and just barely start to hear those cracking noises. That's as far as you can take it. Um, if you're not hearing the cracking noises, then that means great, that's, that's a good thickness for it. If you're hearing a lot of cracking, then you might want to make the wood a little bit thinner. So there really is no rule of thumb as to the thickness of it. It's just one of those things, put it in the, the vise and see how far you can bend it before you start having problems. And uh, keep that as your measurement and idea for what you want to do it. Now you can get into steam bending, but you can't glue when it is wet. So you've got to have these dry in order to do the bending. 
And so it's kind of one of those things that uh, eh, you can make it thicker, but you're not going to get as big of a curve. You can make it thinner and get a really tight curve, kind of play it by ear and find out how far can you actually take your wood. So the next we need to talk about glues. And this is a sticky subject. <laughs> um, there, there are two basic types that you're going to want to be using this. You have your epoxies and you have your PVA wood glues. Now PVA wood glues are generally what I'm going to use for all good glue joints. And this is plenty strong in order to make the bit lamination. Even when I take this to an extreme curve, ooh, snapping, um, this would be strong enough to do it. The problem with PVA is that it needs air to cure. And if you're doing a bunch of different thicknesses and you're stacking them all up, the ones in the middle aren't going to have the air they need to cure for several days. And so you may actually need to leave it in the form for four, five, six, seven, maybe two, three weeks. Um, you're going to need to let this sit for a long time so the air can get all the way to the inside. And that's one of the downsides to using a PVA glue. You can, it's cheap but you're gonna to have to let it sit. And if you let it out of the form too early, then it all breaks apart. And you can't really tell how wet the inside is until you open it up. So I generally don't use PVA glues for that. I use the epoxy glues because I want to trust them. Now what type? Honestly, it doesn't matter that much. Um, as long as you're not bending it too far, most glues will do fairly well. Um, you're gonna want a structural glue. So something like West System, or here I'm going to be using the Total Boat High Performance. Uh, this is kind of my go-to right now. Uh, it is an incredible strong glue, and so this is what I'm gonna be using in my bins today. Um, especially with the pumps, it makes it very easy to mix it back and forth. Then with these pumps, I can easily measure out how many of each. And so I just put down eight or so pumps from this and eight or so pumps from this and then we mix it together. You just want to make sure that you mix it thoroughly. I usually mix it solidly for about two minutes before we start applying. Now this is by far the most important thing is that when you mix epoxy you have to mix it completely thoroughly. And when you think that it's mixed thoroughly it's only mixed halfway. <laughs> so yeah, two solid minutes of mixing. You're going to think, oh, this is mixed fine. We're done. We're done. No, keep mixing. Keep mixing. Because that's the problem that most people have is they stop early and the glue isn't fully set up and you start to have problems there. Mix all the way. Two solid minutes. So I want this to be really, really heavy. So I'm putting a lot of glue on here, making sure I cover the entire source. I want to have squeeze out on here. I don't want anything to be starved. I'm only applying glue to one side because I am applying it just that thick. Uh, it just makes it easier to apply to one side rather than having a sticky side down and doing the other side. So one side, really, really, really thick. Let this stuff glue out, squeeze out. That's what we're looking for. So now we have these all layered up. Glue on one side of all of them, put them together, and now glue is on both sides of all of them. We're going to put them into the frame and cinch them down. And because I have to be kind of conscious of this, I'm not going to be talking through it too much. I'll show you what all is going on. We're going to stick it in here, put the strap around it, and bend out as much force as we can, and then cinch it down. And that's just about all there is to it. So let's dive in and have a look at this. So now uh, we got about half bent. What I want to do is grab a mallet in here and push it all down against the bench. And I know that my frame is at 90 degrees to the bench, so as long as these are down all the way, I should have a nice flat bend on it. The other thing to keep in mind is that we're basically making a bow. We're putting a lot of pressure into this. And so we just need to be careful that if anything goes wrong, we're gonna be shooting things that way. So just stay on this side of it, not on that side of it. So now here you're gonna see we have a big gap on here. We wanna close that up. And so the way we do that is we put a bunch of clamps on it and squeeze that gap out. Now we have all of the clamps on here and you can see why this is a, uh, it's quite an ordeal. You need a lot of clamps. You can never have enough clamps. Uh, C clamps, hand screw clamps, whatever you've got, squeeze out everything you've got in there. You want to put a lot of pressure on it. Don't, don't trust that strap to give you all the pressure you need. You need far more than that. Um, you want to get out the gaps because otherwise the gaps will be shown. If you don't get out the gaps, as long as you have epoxy, it'll still work fine. Uh, but then you'll have a gap showing the, the epoxy line in there. We don't really want that. So this gets rid of all those epoxy lines. 
Usually for most epoxies, even if they say it's cured in 12 hours, I'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours because I want this to be full and solid before we take it off. Because when we take it off, it's going to put all that pressure on there. And over time, the wood is going to relax into that shape and it's not gonna have the pressure on there. But after 24 hours, that board is still wanting to go straight. So we're going to uh, let it sit in this as long as we can and then take it out. When we take it out, you wanna be very careful. In case something goes off, be on the side, not this side, because you're downrange of the bow you're creating. <laughs> but we'll let it sit for 24 hours and then take it off and to show you what we got. Cool. So there you have it. Now I have to say, I'm sorry about the audio in that. We were playing around with new mics and it's not something I can go back and, and re-record, um, but oh well, um, I hope the information got out there. If you'd like to actually see some more detail on this, I did a live video where we took this whole thing step by step by step on Tuesday and we went through bending this large frame that you see here as opposed to just this small one. And we actually went through and covered everything and did the entire thing live. So if you wanna see it all, I'll try and leave a link to that one down below. Also, if you wanna see how this is getting put into the piece of furniture we're making, that video will be coming out on Saturday. So you can actually see these being built, which I'm really getting excited about. I'm really looking forward to putting this all thing together and uh, actually having a desk again. Now this is one of these topics that I could keep going on and on and on about because there are so many different ways and there are different methods and there are different techniques and there's different people who do it in different ways. And it's one of these things that you know you could do a lifetime and just do bent lamination and do a whole bunch of different methods of it. But I wanted to touch on just kind of the basic of what I do here. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, concerns, comments, let me know those down below. I'd love to hear those. Also I want to say a huge, huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the the reason why Wood by Wright is here today. And so thank you for that. If you want to see a names, uh, names of all the people scrolling over here on the side, um, say a huge thank you to them because they're the ones who keep this all coming. So I think that will do it for today. I hope you liked it. And until next time, have a wonderful day. No, I, I'm not getting bent out of shape. Well, actually, I'm, I'm getting bent into shape.